I'm Cape Jewel, and this is Comic Smack. Your weekly daily all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show... The Star-Spangled Man is about to come face to face with Marvel's greatest hunter of men and beast alike. What'll happen next? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? So, picking up with Steve Rogers, he's hustling some pool in the American heartland. He meets a nice young lady, and for a second there, you think Cap might just get his flagpole raised. But hey, no, she's not really that into him. She's actually only here to drug and capture him. So it looks like Cap's balls are going to be red, white, and blue balls for a little longer. This was all, of course, the work of Craven the Hunter, who when we stop and consider the current change in trophy hunting laws in the United States as of recently, he barely qualifies as a villain nowadays. Wonder if the comic is going to mention any of this. Nope, nope, of course they don't. Craven realizes that Steve is the ultimate super soldier and wants to test his mettle by hunting him. Steve is hilariously unfazed by Craven the Hunter, saying he's heard all the stories about him from Spider-Man and isn't scared, knowing full well that he's more sizzle than steak. So to keep things interesting, Interesting, Craven has opted to A, take Cap's shield away from him, and B, settle him with a featherweight backpacker who he will morally be obligated to protect instead of just fending for his own survival, and he does so by frickin' suplexing a leopard, it's awesome. You know, I actually kinda like this twist because the backpacker is dangerously inept at wildlife survival, he almost gets bitten by a snake and Cap has to rush on in to save him, he causes a rock slide that almost kills them both, and again, Steve has to step up to save them both. It seems like Mark Mark Wade is testing Cap's ideals that he mentioned back when this arc began, about how the strong have an obligation to protect those weaker than them at all times. Oh, but you probably already guessed the twist coming. This guy was actually the real trap for Cap because he produces a piece and plans to shoot the Star Spangled Man, only to get it knocked away from him. This allows Craven to get the drop on our hero and shoot him with yet another sleep dart. He doesn't kill him because apparently Craven was hired by a third party to bring him in alive. Wait, wait, wait. If, if he was only good to knock him out to begin with? Why did he bother to go through the whole hunting process when Cap came to him knocked out in the first place? Well, you know, besides the fact that Craven is a hunter and long chases are kind of his own personal fetish. In the end, though, Steve manages to use this turn of events to his advantage, taking Craven over the edge of a cliff and saying that if he doesn't give him the antidote, he'll let him drop. Not that Craven fears death or anything, he's already died once. So in the end, the sleeping dart takes its effect. Steve ends up falling in the water, only to be picked up by Rampart, those weird not-quite-Hydra guys from the beginning of this storyline. What's their goal? Well, to refreeze Captain America. Ah, that's a pretty original plan. I'll give them that much as the comic comes to a close. So that was Captain America, everybody, and overall it was another enjoyable, if not particularly challenging or mind-blowing issue. Wade is clearly building up to something here with Rampart and the freezing, but the slow pace will almost certainly turn some people away, especially if you only got into Captain America in the Nick Spencer era when there were mic drops at every turn. I do, however, enjoy getting to see Captain America fight villains outside of his normal rogues gallery, but I feel like they missed an opportunity to have him interact with Kraven a little bit more in this story. Yeah, the end of the day, though, it's a perfectly satisfying superhero story, which is why I give it a 7 out of 10. So that's Captain America number 697, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, be sure to take a look at some of these other books I've been working on. Then you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at Cape Joel, so you're always up to date on what brand new videos I got coming out next. And hey, if you like what I do and are feeling in a supportive mood, be sure to check out my Patreon link down in the description. Patrons get exclusive access to videos and content before anyone else, and they can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And until next time, everybody, this has been Cape Joel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.